Y'all ain't heard nothing like this before. Beat him in the head with this trilogy. Who dropped this for a certain demographic? Turn it up, blast. This is gonna be a classic. Fact. Not to run it. Hey, Paisans and Gomadas, welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of Gangsters and Cigars. We're live in the VIP room. Tonight's going to be a special night. we got a VIP celebrity in the house. Johnny Depp himself will be with us tonight. We're going to discuss some future projects. We're going to talk about the Espinosa cigar tonight. As you know, I am your host, Bobby Bacala, with my sidekick. Shirtless Mike, wearing a shirt. Wearing a shirt, man. You should take it off because we're in the VIP. Who the fuck's going to know? Exactly. Well, you know, and we're going to do that. There we go. Body built by Burger King. <laughs> Look at that. You handsome son of a bitch. All Thanks right. for tuning in. Great to see you guys. Uh, getting back to that old gangster vibe. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about music, uh, which always plays with the gangsters and the gangster role. Uh, I'm going to talk about some OG rock and roll. Talk about getting back to our roots with rock. I'm going to talk about a new project that I am involved with. With Alfie, who you've seen before on our show, who plays Johnny Depp. We're going to get into that. I'm going to have Alfie explain all of that to you uh, as we go on. But without further ado, like we do, like we do, let's talk about the Espinosa. Yeah, so tonight we are smoking the Espinosa Crema. I believe it's the Ecuadorian Connecticut rapper, Nicaraguan binder and filler. Um, super good. It's creamy, but it's got like a lot of graham cracker notes right off the bat. Um, I mean, you got to make a more mild cigar. If you call it crema, it has to have that cream taste to it. And oh, it does. I can absolutely taste the graham cracker. I like the cigar. Uh, again, you know, I go back to my line. This would be really nice with a cup of uh, Cafe Con Leche. Uh, yep. It has that perfect cream. morning cigar. Absolutely. Got that cream taste to it. Uh, that and a uh, guava and cream cheese pastry, which is my favorite. For all my fellow Cubanos out there, uh, favorite pastry, favorite coffee. And this cigar would pair quite, quite well with it. It's definitely light. Yeah. But, but it has flavor. But it's still very flavorful. You know, it's one of the better Connecticut's on the market. There's a few that are really, really light. This is definitely one of them. But we dig Espinosa anyway. Oh, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. A whole, whole lot of bro shit. I think he's getting away from saying bro all the time like he used to. Bro, bro, bro. But we do dig the Espinosa. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Uh, we just got that. We just finally got Espinosa earlier this week. Or, no, no, last week. End of last Friday last week. So we got quite a bit. We got the Laranga. We got the First one, the Escuro. We also got the Azabulejo. That's how you see it. I, I, I probably idea. fucked it up, but they got probably both did, but... Alfredo and the, the 601, which is the original. Because back before Eric Espinosa had Espinosa, he was partnered with Eddie Ortega. So it was called 601 Cigar. So he kind of has the 601 blends as part of the Espinosa collection. And also the Mercia Lago, that looks like the Batman. I think that you know that cigar is a really good cigar, full body. You know, so we I got a lot of good Espinosa that. cigars now with the expanded humidor, and it's coming along very nicely. Shout out to uh, buddy Robert Caldwell. Give me a call, bitch. Uh, met a friend of yours, cool guy tonight, Mike oh, the yeah. Greek. Mike the Greek. Shouts out to him from Luciano Cigars. I uh, had my first Luciano tonight, which was absolutely amazing. Um, I dig the cigar. I dig the smoke. We're going to try to have Mike back on when he's in town. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a cool cat. Update on your uh, Hitman cigars. The newest line of the Hitman is the Crazy Joe Bananos. Uh, that's the newest of the Hitman brand. So it has 99 bananas, 99 butterscotch, orange peel and clove, Definitely, definitely a killer new smoke that I came out with. I would say in honor of Crazy Joe. As you know, he was the head of the Banano Crime family. Uh, was a big, big cigar buff uh, before he had his demise. Uh, but in the vein of Gangsters and Cigars, that's a new line. The Crazy Joe Bananos. 
Uh, I'll have them next week. We can try those. I'll have you try that with me next week yeah. and critique it. Uh, be gentle. Be nice. Oh, yeah. All right. That's all I got to say to you. Be gentle and be nice. That's all I know how to be is gentle and nice, you know? So whenever you guys want to reach out to us and give us some information about what you want us to smoke or some of the things that you want us to talk about, uh, my buddy, one of the leading and he's a publisher. He was my ex-partner. He's got some great books that are out. Uh, Bobby Walker, he's going to be in uh, showing pictures all the way back in the day of all of the gangster hits, and gangsters and old time cop photos. We're going to talk about Gangsters 101. Now we're going to have him on soon. Uh, I have some other guests coming up. Tonight, we wanted to make it laid back. We wanted to talk a lot about the cigars, but most of all, I wanted to talk about my new project. Um, one of my dearest friends, Alfie, is going to come on. He absolutely, let me just, hold on, so he can't hear me. He absolutely thinks he's Johnny fucking Depp, but you'll see when he comes on. <laughs> so we're going to have him come sit on the couch in a minute with us and talk about our new project. Guys, got to be looking out for this new hot band. It's going to take this place by storm called L.A. Nocturnals. I'm going to have Alfie explain to you exactly what the concept of the band is, who's in the band, what we're about. We're going to be out here in force. We're going to be touring, and you guys need to come hook up. And you never know, I think there may be an L.A. Nocturnal cigar that comes out. We'll talk about that, too, in the future. That will be a collab between me and um, Alfie on the L.A. Nocturnals. Uh, shout out to my buddy, my brother Keith Corman, uh, with Bad Influence. I'm going to have to record my new sound system he put in my bike. That is absolutely deafening. Uh, and the only thing that's going to be playing out of that is L.A. Nocturnals. Just thought I'd throw that out to you all. All right. So you got anything? What have you been up to? Not the much, man. I went to the range uh, last week. Shot off my new 380. You know, I gotta keep the skills sharp. So you like to carry that little toy? <laughs> you haven't uh, grown up for 45 yet. Well, I, you know, I, I, you know, I got my nine millimeter that I, you know, that I like, and you know, it's, it, comparing the two, that my nine millimeter has, you know, a little bit more recoil to manage. I'm still pretty good with it, but. Shoot my 380. You know, I'm known as shirtless Mike, so I need something I can carry in my pocket. Because you know, you never know when I'll end up shirtless, and I don't want to, you know, can't be open carrying. 380 is cool from the 7 to 15. I wouldn't go any further with that. On then again, as you know, most firefights are three to seven feet anyway. Uh, but 380 is a good round. Um, I got a Walter PPK 380, uh, one of my favorite guns. Uh, was actually a present from one of my brothers, Mike Comerford, with Freedom Guns. Uh, thank you, Mike. I love that gun. It's in my collection. I just thought I'd throw that out. That being that, we're speaking about uh, guns. So I had a good time, you know. My, you know, my wife carries the uh, the OG original gangster gun. She carries the 38 sub nose. Uh, the only difference is an air weight. It's uh, not heavy like the old 38 Chief Specials. Uh, it's stainless steel. Pretty gun. Uh, it's great for a woman carry. You don't have to worry about malfunctions. You don't have to worry about jamming. Uh, you pull the trigger. You can't hit somebody in the five rounds and start running because that's all that's in there. But, again, it's a great weapon because they use, you know, revolvers are flawless. Um, if you're not adequate on knowing how to clear a feed, a jam, a stovepipe, a double feed, uh, if you don't know how to do that in a firefight, you're going to end up dead. Uh, a revolver, you just keep following through. So shot at the shot at the shot. Naturally, everything is double action. You can shoot single action, but everything is double action. That might take on uh, 38s and OG style uh, yeah. guns. Um, unless you want to talk about the 1911 45, which is absolutely an OG gangster gun as well. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the 45, it's mostly all I carry, uh, other than the 9. All right, both guns that came out of fucking nowhere. Which well, was, you know, which was good. I, don't, I don't do a lot of my life. I go to work, I come home, so something that interesting that I did. No, oh, very interesting, man. Very cool. I'm going to have to go out to the range again and teach you how to actually shoot a fucking fire off. But, <laughs> you know, that's another story. All right, so without 
further ado, if um, Mr. Johnny Depp can join us on the couch for a minute and get right right in with us, move over right there. Right next to the shirtless. Yes. Okay. All right. Johnny Depp's in the house. Um, if you guys haven't heard of the band Hollywood Vampires, it has Johnny Depp, Alice Cooper, Joe Perry. Shirtless Mike. Shirtless Mike. Uh, Special guest appearance. And I'm trying to remember the uh, bass player from Guns N' Roses, uh, Duff McKeegan. Correct? Mm-hmm. Hold on a minute. He's smoking his. Uh, I don't know what the fuck that is. That he's smoking. He's smoking his. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so, Mr. Depp, tell uh, tell our viewers about your new project. I was going to cheers you first with my mega pint. <laughs> cheers, mate. Cheers, you. Hey, don't cheers. Drink. Hold on. Uh, do you drink? I do, but not that often. So, okay. Let's nice see you with your shirt off for once. Shirtless Mike. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't know if this interview is Johnny or is me. So uh, uh, yeah, so we were putting together the the first uh, tribute band to the Hollywood Vampires. Uh, Alice Cooper, as as Bobby was telling me, Alice Cooper, Joe Perry, uh, Duff McKagan is in it, uh, Johnny Depp. But the the cool concept when when Bob and I talked about it was to do uh, we're uh, the first time to be a cover band of a cover band. Um, you know, the vampires have been out since, you know, mid 2000s, uh, back on tour now. Um, so it seemed like a natural progression. I've done Jack Sparrow stuff. Uh, obviously, you guys saw my last thing. I, I do a lot of impressions. The Johnny Depp thing, you know, in part was I, I tend to dress like this anyway. Uh, I've been growing my hair out, so we went with it. Um, and it's something different. It's something that we can play with every night, do something uh, do the, the stuff that they're doing, do some other covers in that style. Um, and just add a, really the show part of it. We talked about this afternoon. We met with the other guys is being able to, to have a full show production, not just a house band somewhere. That's, which always pisses me off because it's just, it's music and no one pays attention. When you come to see the LA nocturnals, you see the play on words there for Hollywood vampires is that we're putting on a show. Um, you're not going to be bored, but we also wanted to bring together, not just any people, you know, our friend Kanan, who's, who does Alice Cooper, um, now never done Alice before, but headlines his own band. Um, and then John, his tribute band, uh, does Paul Stanley and that. So we're doing pretty much what the vampires did is we're pulling these, these headliners from all these other bands, myself included, to put together this super cover band, which is, is pretty much what they did. So we're doing it in the same vein. Um, and it's it's exciting process. I mean, we had our first meeting today with everyone, and everybody that's on board is just very excited about it, the, the spectacle of it, and uh, what we're doing. I talk extremely too fast to be Johnny Depp. Well, you could talk like <laughs> you could talk like Depp after we explain yeah, everything. <clears throat> but when you come see the show, you're gonna absolutely think that you're watching Hollywood Vampires. Uh, like Alfie said, it's gonna be an entire stage show. Uh, it's not going to be a bunch of guys sitting up there and, and playing music and singing and trying to emulate another band. Uh, we are going to have our own sound, but you're going to absolutely see the similarities. You're going to see that we look like them, we sound like them, uh, but we're going to be more fun. Uh, there's no other band, like Alfie said, out here doing this. We are going to be the first. Uh, we're looking to be doing a... Stop me if I'm talking out of turn, Alfie. Trying to have a big New Year's Eve uh, coming out sort of party. Um, we should be ready to go by New Year's Eve. Now, some of the other guys in the band have some commitments in October, or we would have done an October gig, uh, but you never know. Right now, we're shooting for New Year's Eve. It's going to be great. We're going to have, hopefully, some celebrities stop by to see our first act. Um we're already getting asked to play gigs in Orlando and St. Augustine and all over. And, uh, you know, we really haven't even got out yet. It's the fact that we're something completely different. Um, you can go see cover bands all you want. You know, hey, we're a Journey tribute band. Yeah. Or something of that fact. But to go and see a stage band and 
uh, we're going to work off each other. And, uh, you know, the guys sound like them, look like them. And we'll be as sarcastic as fuck, just like we are here on the show. So people are going to actually get to see, like they're at a concert. That's what we're shooting for. We're yeah, we're shooting and, for and a bar band. You could, you could say, why are we uh, taking so long to get out? But we want we want the show to be right. I mean, the, the your three iconic frontmen, um, it, it has to be right because, you know, I know for myself. I mean, Johnny Depp is everywhere, uh, especially with the, the trial. Um, but it's it's one of those things that's not, it's it's like, I mean, he's an icon. So being able to get it right, not for me, it's a learning curve. We talked about this before. I grew up playing blues and rockabilly and old country, and I play the guitar very high. Even when I did rock, I played the guitar high. So I'm learning to play the guitar very low, right? And lacks the days of old. So it's a learning curve, but also, um, you know, the guy doing, uh, Kanan doing uh, Alice, getting that, that nuances that when you see it, you're going to say, wow, that's like watching Alice Cooper, or, or you hear it, that's like listening to Alice Cooper, that's listening to Joe Perry, and, you know, Joe Perry's no slouch on the guitar, and he was John, so, you know, and, and Bobby coming in doing bass, um, just, like I said, picking up that essence, picking up that, that overall feel, um, but we, I do understand that we will be under a microscope, A, because we're going to be a new band of its kind, B, because of the people that we're portraying, so, um, so, yeah. I mean, do you feel the pressure being under the microscope? Uh, yeah, I do because it's um. That's the image. That's it. Keep your eye out. Turtles. I feel the pressure as far as um, you know, just I probably feel the pressure as much as Johnny does, being known as a very talented, versatile actor, character actor. And stepping into this role of a, you know, I mean, a great, he's a great guitar player, musician, um, but stepping into the role of something so different. So a lot of people are going to see that in me, which is going to be so different. So I think the the nervousness will be very genuine and, and, and you know, where, where he's very, very reserved off. Yeah. Off yeah. But I mean, film, camera, you know. You do Sinatra and Dean Martin. And our favorite Tom Jones, and you've done all of these characters yeah. for years and years, and playing in Vegas, and um, our Alice, who's played in L.A., and so it's definitely a group of musicians that have played before. Um, so we're not strangers to the stage. As some of you know, I've played with uh, the band Hung for years and years, um, so we're no strangers. The big thing was today was meeting to see if we were going to gel as just as people. Uh, if you don't have that, if you don't have that gel in the beginning, and we know that with every band, before we get out there, we'll have 19 arguments on stage to make sure that it's perfect because <clears throat> we all want it perfect. So when you see us, hopefully it will be perfect. Um, Alfie strives as a individual who does production, not only theater, but music, he strives for that perfection along with these other musicians. So I'm hoping that comes out, but I can see the friendship. Not only, you know, Alfie and I have been friends for years and years, family friends for years and years and years. Uh, so we already have that, uh, but I felt really comfortable with the other two guys. Yeah. They were very cool meeting them, you know, very cool. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exciting project. These guys are still alive. And they're still on tour, uh, so you know we got to do that that justice as well. So I mean that it, it's it is exciting, but you know, as anything that I do, it's I, I I don't live as these people. So I you know my son's very funny. He says, um, just don't be like one of those weirdos who like has all of Johnny Depp's tattoos and lives like him every day. And I and if that was the case, I would have been living as Dean Martin my whole life uh, or somebody. But um, there is a there is a, a bit of getting inside of that person, and you know. Really. How long have you been doing this? Yeah. Really. Oh, it's uh, just YouTube. The sense of getting you know getting 
getting inside that character's head and, and learning and studying that person. We talked about that today as a person. So when some a curveball's thrown your way, I don't want to live my life as Johnny Depp for sure. Um, but it is it is fun. I mean, it's fun to play somebody relevant and and in in the public eye. I'm usually playing dead people, which none of them will come alive and kick my ass if I do this wrong. But like definitely, the, I'd like the bang his ex now. Amber Heard. Yeah. Amber Turd. Uh, come on. Ha. Think about it. Have you ever done with a woman that wasn't fucking crazy? So, in that vein, Johnny Depp, with a, I, it just goes. I'm, I'm sorry, it just goes. No offense, sweetheart. Um, I knew she was sitting over there. I didn't say anything. <laughs> or sat and drank. I just let him say what he feels. <laughs> but people get weirdly involved with things. I mean, I know guys that have done Johnny Depp for years that, that don't really take on the physical look, but they have all of his tattoos. I mean, they go as far as, you know, cutting the tip of their finger off to get close it's like doing van gogh and cutting your ear off it's very strange it, those of you in the cigar world even in the local world you know jack schmink you know jack yeah. jack big cigar guy but jack has jack doesn't shave the sideburns off or dress the when he talks yeah and that's fine and that works for jack but uh, when i go to the grocery store i don't i mean it was bad enough we went to the bahamas and i just was dressed like me and some guy you know with his facial hair said hey johnny depp johnny depp I'm like great thank you um, but I, I couldn't imagine living like that. But each guy we met today that they do want to put that much nuance into what they're doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, but you know, I'm going to be like shirtless Mike, but I'm going to take my shirt off everywhere. Me too. I'm going to be pantsless Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had somebody try to do that at my birthday back. So they're like, oh, I'm going to be pantsless Mike. And I, I was already drunk at this point. I see the guy. <laughs> And he was pantsless in the corner, laughing his ass off. I, I I'm just curious where you're going to put your gun, mate. You talked about having a gun. Where are you going to put it? If you're shirtless, where do you stick it? Under a fold. That's that's for me to know. Well, so I don't want to find, find out. out. I don't want to find out. <laughs> There's something a little bit underneath there. I'm just saying. You got to admit, though. When it came to stand up off the cuff, your boy's pretty fucking hot. Who's that? Me. Oh, at his roast. Oh, yeah. oh I missed yeah, the roast. It. You missed the roast. roast. You killed it. You missed the roast. His mom and grandmother were cringing, but uh, <laughs> that's how it should be. If it's act- good. It should be cringe. Oh, you said absolutely. Yeah. Told you know, don't freaking say. <laughs> oh well, I know. I've roasted with him. I know. We we <laughs> actually we, roast we share roasts back jokes back and forth to make, <laughs> to make sure we. Uh, and I go, oh, should I say it? It's really bad. You should probably say it. So. I absolutely love your Johnny Depp. Um, the only other guy I've seen do Johnny Depp, but from the Pirates to a T. Matter of fact, they used to win. And you met uh, my friend Steve before. Um, unfortunately, Steve doesn't do it as much as he did, but he used to travel all over and do these big shows and win these competitions. And he, he had it down to the science, yeah. too. Um, other from him doing that, I mean, every day Johnny Depp, I mean, you kill it. Probably, it's a, it's hard to do because it's I a say. real it's it's a real per, I mean you know it, it, it's it's one thing to go into the Jack Sparrow thing and or go into the Willy Wonka thing because you know they're they're very definite voices I'm mean, Jack Sparrow you start, but everyone wants to go funny don't they it's the problem's not the problem they say go view the problem you know and that's one thing and I I realize that there's a touch of the voice in there and Johnny's a bit more source I didn't have a mega pint and it's kind of Jack but slower not as english you know? so it's very slow and drawn out i mean like i i watch these interviews to watch them like <laughs> like what's next but he's very well thought and it's interesting the, the correlation between he and i i understand his uh his friendship but his uh, i don't want to say obsession with poetry which i have too but of hunter s thompson um when he did fear and loathing in las vegas for me it's my literary icon is ernest hemingway so you know we we i think we both are, are a little weird and twisted and that obsession with those two people in our lives, which I understand where his pattern of mind comes thinking about things, which is cool. And, you know, Hunter S. Thompson, what, what a crazy, kooky, brilliant, crazy son of a bitch. What about Ernest Hemingway? What a crazy, kooky, brilliant son of a bitch. Um, but also very, what a man's man too. You know? and so, uh, yeah, so that's, that's all I got. I love them both, literally. Absolutely. Literally. Literally. Literally, literally. 
I was waiting. Literary, I, literally. Right. I was, I was, <laughs> I was absolutely waiting for somebody to pick up on that and say something on that. Um, and thank God Johnny Depp gained a little weight during the trial. I don't have to lose as much weight. <laughs> Just a little bit. Not much. S- though. Stress eating, no. Yes. Yes. Uh, the instruments are going to look the same. Uh, we're going to try to um, play the same instruments they do. Yeah. Um, on our budget. On our budget, <laughs> right? So For now, until the first. So we're going to be uh, playing K and Walmart brand instruments. Um, <laughs> no, all kidding aside. The first act. First act. First, first act. act uh, you know, came in a uh, came in a <laughs> box. Uh, you got a uh, a plastic strap, and uh, if you plug the guitar in, it would blow up, just like uh, some of the other ones. But no, all kidding aside, when you look, when we play, give you the illusion. You're right. You'll absolutely think that you're at one of the concerts, and that's what we're going for. Um, if any of our fans out there have any type of spooky type of props that you guys want to get rid of, or you guys are selling. And you're not going to stick it up our ass as far as prices go. Um, you know, the eight foot skeletons. I know we have two, right? We got one. Big we got skeleton one big skeleton. skeleton. Uh, I know Lowe's now has this incredible mummy that's out that's fucking kick ass. But anything like that, uh, I know um, Alfie's working on or already has a custom mic that's going to be pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do some. The effects are going to be great. Lighting effects are going to be great. I don't think you're going to see pyrotechnics. We don't want Alfie's place to go up and and uh, if you put us outside, we'll, we'll yeah. yeah we'll but we'll um, you know, we plan on doing the bigger of events and shows uh, as opposed to come and see us in um, a local bar in Brevard County. I wonder if my my son growing up with a father who always does other people things, <laughs> like well, hey, know, watching me do this. Like, yeah, but weirdo. think about it. He always has somebody new to come home. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's, it, it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, so speaking about your son, so does he understand that uh, he'll be coming our roadie? Yeah, he has to. He has to carry stuff. He's already my roadie. He carries stuff all the time. He tells me I'm. he's my business manager, that we left the meeting too late today. I had somewhere else to go before I was here. I showed up late. If you would have listened to me, Dad, we would have been on time. You, you stayed way too long talking to those guys. Well, hold on a minute. Not that wrong. It was right. Right. But I can't, he can't know he's right when he's right. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. And hey, you know what? And we'll even kick him a few bucks for picking up the amplifiers and shit. Yeah. Maybe. He's, he's growing the facial hair out like this. I mean, he's trying to. I know. I see it's it. It's funny. I see it. I see it. He's got the tips going on. Yeah. That was a TIPS. A TIPS. Not like this one. Right. It's okay. <laughs> not he's not shirtless cash. <laughs> But uh, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. And um, are you excited, Michael? I'm excited. Mike should be excited. Mike, you gonna come see us play? Mike's, gonna, gonna, Mike's gonna sell. Will you, will you say, cigars. ladies and gentlemen, LA Nocturnals? Will you will you be our hype man at bro. the beginning of the show? Bro, Put shirt, I'll take your shirt off. Man, shirtless man, though. Man, bro. What's that? I'll be your hype man. All right. All right. Shirtless. Can you do the worm? Of course, I'm shirtless. Mike, I can't do the worm. Well, we're gonna teach you. You're gonna worm right across the stage. No, I'm just gonna get up. There. Well, you've got an LA Nocturnals tattoo. Yeah, we do an LA Nocturnal tattoo. We got a tattoo guy it. over. I'll, yeah, we'll I'll pay, pay for it. it. No, we'll pay for it. We do it. Yeah. You heard it. <laughs> uh, we'll be making arrangements to have the tattoo. Matter of fact, how's this? We're gonna do the tattoo live on one of our podcasts. Um, it's got to be. It's got to be somewhere on the chest or the stomach because yeah, right, here. right there, the symbol would look amazing right there. Right there. Yeah. You're going to have to shave that shit. But yeah. All right. We're going to have that done live on air. Uh, look forward to it. I've not been this close to a shirtless man this long, not in a bathhouse. In <laughs> you watch Gladiator movie? Yeah. He has no idea where that line comes from. Do you have any idea where that line comes from? No. I don't watch Gladiator movies. I don't know. It's like one of the funniest fucking movies that were ever out. Airplane. Airplane. Oh, Airplane? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen the Airplane. It's a long time ago, but... That's so. where the line goes from. Okay. Johnny, you shouldn't have played the movie. <laughs> Sorry. I just uh, don't remember that. Like, the Airplane, yeah, I've seen Yes, it. it comes directly from... You know, like that. the Shirley line, like, don't call me Shirley. Oh, yeah. Something so, on the wing. Something. Yeah, asking about coffee. Oh, 
like a lot of fun then. Relax. <laughs> yeah. I always say, uh, I had a friend of mine who we went to the diner one time, and you always expect some gelatin cover, like when I was strong and black. But he said, uh, without a penis. And it was, I think we all spit everything out because <laughs> he was the most quiet, soft spoken. And the girl goes, How would you like your coffee? And we're all waiting for it. You know, guy, you love one. He goes, Without a penis. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was the best. So not shaken. Yeah, not That's shaken. Right. right. Yeah, I got you. In a cup. In, In a, a cup. cup. For my women. I hope so. That's, I guess that's for another story. 2023, I have to purchase that. Right. Unless you buy it, then you never go home alone. But that's another story. Of course, very true. <laughs> very, very true. Um, Jesus, how did we get off course on that? Mike's shirtless. Mike's shirtless. I know he's got me. I'm in it. I'm in, toward me. I'm in a daze. I'm just in a flesh like overload. Yeah, first time you've been on like this reminds well i've Mike's, been on Mike of, of, of not like this not here with us Do you, i can't wait for the tattoo dude yeah that's gonna be great look for merch look merch is going to be amazing uh t-shirts hats we're going to do mechanic shirts that logo is going to be all over the place yeah um support your logo support your boys support la nocturnal to one of my best friends, my ex partner on the department, um, Jay Dunbar, who's probably one of the hottest rock photographers that are out there right now. Uh, he's incredible. Uh, he was a guitarist in my band that I played in for years and years. Hung. Um, Jay, whenever you're ready to come down and shoot your boys and do a little article on uh, your magazine that you represent, that'd be great. So hope to see you. Lots of love out to you, Jay. Uh, I know we've got, uh, you already have somebody working media and bookings and stuff for us. Yeah. yeah. So if you guys are interested, you want to see a show, we'll start advertising though. You guys, let's pack this place for our New Year's Eve bash. Uh, it's going to be absolutely rocking. You guys are going to have a blast. Tangiers, Tangiers. Tangiers, yep. www. The Tangiers Florida.com. The Tangiers Florida. Who you got coming, by the way? Just uh, we have Pat Travers is coming. Everybody loves Pat Travers. He's coming on uh, Saturday night. Sunday, we have Chicago <coughs> Rewired. Out Goes the Light. Um, yeah, Out Goes the Light. Great song. Um, we have a 1940s burlesque show, our Sirens of Summer show coming up. I'll be there. Uh, we have um, David Pastorius, who is Jocko Pastorius' nephew. I know exactly who he is. Um, He's also going to be playing bass this weekend for Pat Travers. Uh, we have um, a good friend of mine, uh, Craig Diamond, world famous comedian magician, uh, coming in. We got uh, we have so much coming in. Uh, big big thing coming up: the Shovelhead, one of Florida's favorite bands. Um, they'll be coming in doing a, a masquerade ball with us in October. Uh, we have we have so much stuff. We have a Journey uh, tribute band. I. I wish I was pre prepared to tell you this. I, I would tell you their name. I'm Majesty sorry. of Rock. Sorry, Majesty of Rock. I'm sorry That's that I, I'm, I'm sorry that I hey, Majesty of Rock. I, I'm sorry that I made a dig at journey cover bands. My apologies. Yeah, great. I meant yeah. meant nothing. Meant nothing. I apologize. I think I feel like I'm leaving people out, but we have a lot of events, a lot of stuff. Well, wait a minute, in. you got the big uh, Halloween bash. We've got our Halloween show this year. It's going to be um, uh, slashbacks to the Caribbean. So we're going to be able to do a little bit more of a pirate theme. Still be set in a graveyard, um, but it will be slashback to the Caribbean. Uh, be pretty neat. Uh, more info on that as it develops. Our, my annual Christmas show um, coming up as well. There's there's a lot of stuff, but the best way to go is to www.tangersflorida.com under our events page. You can buy your tickets there, everything you need. Unfortunately, this weekend, Pat Travers and uh, Chicago Rewired, um, both of those nights are completely sold out. But um, please check all the other shows coming in. Shit, I would have loved to see Pat Travis. Love Pat Travis. Always been one of my favorites. I'm sure he's going to put on a great show. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure as well. I, I hope we're all ready for it. So when <laughs> that is when, even though you can't get tickets anymore. Pat Travis, this uh, Saturday night. Very nice. Yeah. Very cool. Check that out. I mean, you know, keep keep up with us in case there's any, you know, happens to be any cancellations. But uh Greatly appreciate everybody's support. Um, that's all I have to say. I'm out of wine. Out of that's wine. All I have to say. I need more wine. 
So thanks for Johnny Depp sitting on the couch with us tonight. I told you we were going to have a celebrity in the house. Uh, I'm stoked about uh, the new band and the new project with with Alfie. Um, kind of going crazy on wardrobe and equipment. And Five minutes after I told him about this, he bought 16 more bass guitars, pedals, shoes. It's I did. I did. All right. All right. Take it easy. So you can't have enough basses like guitars on the stage. Why am I going to go into different tuning methods when I could just grab another bass? And we can't afford a guitar tech to hand us. Correct. Correct. So, yeah, you may have bought another couple of basses. I may have bought one, two, three, four, five new pedals. Dawn is shaking her. She's just hearing all of this. No, I yet. Yeah. Well, Did you ask hey, permission? Hey, Johnny. <laughs> oh. no, um, no, she, she's actually been really supportive. She's stoked about the band. Uh, I That's because he's going to get out of the house. Correct. I told her. I told her she can work the merch table for us only because she's beautiful. Um, she's not going to be topless, Dawn. So don't get any ideas. No, no. She'll be sporting an LA Nocturnal T-shirt or whatever. It is. Actually, I went out and bought her LA Nocturnal pasties. I did. I, you know, that's not a bad idea to sell. Uh, um, that's a very good idea. I actually, I, I like that kind. Mike's going to wear those. When Mike's going to wear the LA the Nocturnal pasties. Uh, I bought us some killer. Almost rockabilly, but very uh, goth dresses and shit. Uh, so she's pretty stoked because she gets. I gotta get her something too. I just can't buy nine million pedals and bases. As a matter of fact, are we not going shopping tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Saturday. Yeah. So don't let him for even though he probably has one of the coolest wardrobe uh, dressing rooms and closets of a guy that I know, uh, you know, you guys know, I absolutely love fashion as well, but, um, he has a lot of shit. So we're going to go shopping together, spend some more money that we don't have. Uh, so my beautiful wife, Dawn can uh, scold me and scream at me later. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks guys. I appreciate it. I love you. Love you. All right. Yes, Thank you. It's all low. All right. Make room on the other side. Make room. So tonight's a really special night uh, for me. Uh, it's uh, Dawn and I's nine-year wedding anniversary. Uh, been through some uh, health together, uh, health issues, and have come out of it. And, um, I've actually never been with somebody as supportive as Dawn. Um, She's incredible. She supports me, even though that uh, she knows I'm fucking crazy. And as a matter of fact, I think that I told her um, that she was or I was crazy when we first met. We were great friends before we uh, we got married and hooked up. Um, so it's nine years today. We've been together 10 years. I know a few years before that as friends. Um, I told her to come to the dark side when we met because uh, I got to be honest with you. Uh, she was fucking boring. So I had to bring her over to the dark side. <laughs> now she's a fucking blast. Uh, and again, she's in my corner. Uh, and I've never had that before. Anybody in my corner. Um, so with that, I love her. And would you come over to the couch so we can come on over so I can give you a toast, please, for our anniversary. Yes, happy anniversary, y'all. Thank you. It's my beautiful wife, Dawn, um, for our uh, fans and friends. Uh, I just want to say happy anniversary. Um, I know it's 10 years. We've been married nine. Uh, I couldn't think of a day without you. Uh, thank you. All right. So look for Dawn at the merch counter. Uh, she's going to be pushing some LA Nocturnal gear. Uh, she's also my girl when it comes to selling uh, the Hitman cigars. Uh, she's supportive and helps me out as well. Um, she usually accompanies me here at Smoke Rings. Uh, thanks to Lou at Smoke Rings for letting us have our show here uh, once a week. Next week, Sean Kelly, the owner of 73 Moto, the hottest, coolest new European-themed bike bar, uh, an establishment in downtown Sanford. The guy is a charm. Such a great guy. I've been spending some time with Sean. 
Uh, I am sure that Sean's going to want LA Nocturnals to play there. He's turning his place into a big uh, event area. It's probably, am I wrong, one of the coolest places around? Very cool place. Uh, vintage stuff in there. He's got a guy who makes guitars in there as well. That's really cool. He sells all vintage line of um, motorcycle gear and wear. Uh, he's got a badass Norton in there. Badass old antique BMW. Excuse me. He does uh, every month is a different run. He hosts a different Moto 73 run uh, for all riders. Uh, he also does a uh, Harley run as well, so all riders are welcome. Uh, they're going to have an event out there shortly. Uh, I'll be there with Dawn supporting our motorcycle clothing company, Heartless Motorcycle Clothes. Uh, you'll be seeing that around as well. So next week, I'll be in Sanford. I'll be at 73 Moto talking to Sean. I'm going to have uh, Sean give you a... Uh, quick look of the inside of his place, what he has planned. The place is friggin' huge. Um, downtown Sanford has really blown up with bars and restaurants. It's a cool place to hang. But if you're into vintage yeah. motorcycles, I know um, doesn't Sean does. He does distinguished gentleman riders where they get dressed up all European, um, beautiful clothes, ties, and gets on these antique bikes and goes for a run. I'd love to do it. Unfortunately, uh, your tire just doesn't go on my Harley. Uh, but who knows? Maybe I'll pick up an old um, bike again. Um, may have to pick up another Triumph again. Um, I did love mine uh, just to become one of the uh, gentleman riders. Uh, but uh, she's already had it with me with all the new band equipment that's coming in. And all my other addictions, uh, estate sales with Alfie. Um, picking with, uh, my buddy, Steve Ham. Uh, Steve Ham is also my partner in Heartless Motorcycle Company. Uh, so shout out to Steve. Hope you're feeling better, brother. Uh, he just bought a bad ass, a bad ass. One of those golf carts, you know, with the big wheels and lifted and oh, stereo. Yeah. And yeah, I guess when you have nothing else to do with your money, you buy fucking golf carts, but I love you, Steve. That being said, I'm going to close it the way I always close it. Uh, stay tuned next week. We're going to be at 73 Moto. And you could either be seated at the table or you could be on the menu. And you never what? You want to be on the menu. Never want to be on the fucking menu. It never ends well. Mike, thanks for coming on shirtless. Uh, no I am serious about the tattoo. We're going to do it live. I'm going to ask one of my close friends to uh, give him the tattoo live. Uh, L.A. Nocturnals will take care of it for him. Uh, and then he's going to have to support it every episode. I mean, that, that's the way it goes. I love you all. Uh, please hit the like button. Please tell us what you want to see. Please support all our different projects with small businesses. Please support the Tangiers. It's one of the coolest places around. Matter of fact, today, some of the other new band members came in and go, wow, I never thought it looked like this inside. It looks like you're stepping back in Vegas. The place is cool. Uh, Dawn and I went and caught a show the other night. Uh, incredible show that was put on. Hospitality was incredible. Uh, great people, great musicians. Uh, and then naturally, uh, Johnny Depp owns it. So how can you go wrong with a celebrity who owns the Tangiers? All right. No further ado. Thank you again. May God bless. And we'll see you next week.